I've created an interface called Q. What an interface is, it's a little bit similar to a class, except it intentionally has no actual code inside of it. All it is, is you're declaring public methods. And if we go through here, I have Java docs on each of these methods that will help you write them. And we have, of course, the two string. Uh, every object has a two string, so I didn't really need to put two string in here. Uh, we're going to add, and it's going to add an element at the end of the queue. You don't get to add at any index, but it has to be at the end. Uh, remove, peak, and you can just go down and look at all these. They're going to be similar to methods you've uh, implemented before, but we're going to do it as an interface now. So how do we implement this interface? We're going to make a new file and I've called it Q implementation. And I'm going to go ahead and comment everything in here. So it's as if we're starting from scratch. So it starts out normal public class. I'm calling it Q implementation because it implements the Q. So here is a new word. What this is, it's sort of like subclassing, but when you implement an interface, you can only implement an interface. You are promising to write all the methods that are defined inside of that interface. Right now, there's no code in here, so we're not actually implementing any of the methods. So let's go ahead and change that. Right here, you can implement all abstract methods. And if you notice, these are all the exact same methods that are in the queue interface, except in the queue interface, they appear like this. You've never, you've probably never seen code like that where you have a method that's not uh, followed by curly braces and then some code. And so what we're doing here is we're now going to implement these methods. So that's how you can quickly get all the methods that you need to implement for the interface. I'm going to give you a little bit of help on this. And you do need, well, you can use a few different, you could use a regular array, but it's going to be a pain because you have to worry about when the size changes and shifting. And so I really recommend using an array list for this. You do need a constructor, and of course, all that's going to do is instantiate your array list. I just called it A, so it's less typing. I am giving you the add method. Now, what is this add supposed to do? You can look back in the queue and go down to add, insert specified element at the end of the queue. And if we look at this add method, this is the Java doc for the array list. It should pop up here. There we go. Appends the specified element to the end of this list. So this is perfect. This already inserts the element where we want it to be, which is at the end. And we're done in one line of code right there for add. Uh, I'm not going to show you two string, but you do need to print out, or not print out, but to return all of the uh, all of the elements inside of this queue. There's other methods you're going to need. Remove, peek. Uh, and I will show you how I test the code next.